Times are tough, and whether you're trying to cut cost or not, I highly recommend checking out some of the free streaming services out there. One of the best being Amazon's Freebie. That's right, I found 15 fantastic movies you can watch free on Freebie right now. Freebie is available within Prime Video, and if you don't have a Prime Video account, you can use the Freebie app. This video is sponsored by The Beard Club. I'll be talking more about them later in the video, but right now we're gonna go with my number 15 pick, which is a banger for a last pick on this list, Bad Times at the El Royale. Now, I love so many elements of this movie. It's got a fantastic look, an amazing concept, and some really great characters done by some particularly fine actors. I would even say this is maybe one of my favorite Chris Hemsworth roles. Or at least I appreciated the fact that he's doing something very different with this role than you normally see him doing. This is from the same director as Cabin in the Woods, and it goes in some equally weird directions. Ultimately, I didn't feel like this one was as glued together as I wanted it to be, but still, it's got a killer soundtrack, some fantastic scenes in it. I do think if it had been glued together better, it would have ranked much higher on this list, but still, Bad Times is a hell of a pick for the last pick on a list of free movies. My next pick is an action sci-fi movie from South Korea with a really dark, twisted edge, and they've actually just recently released a sequel to The Witch. Now, The Witch Part 1 Subversion is the official title of the movie I'm recommending here. This movie has some wild, bloody, elaborate action sequences that are really stunning to watch, but it's also got a really interesting story. Especially if you've liked any action movies from South Korea, the writer-director of these movies actually wrote I Saw the Devil, one of the best movies I've ever seen from that country. And while The Witch isn't as good, it's more of a fantasy movie and has some weirder elements, it still is a banger that I know a lot of people watching this video have yet to see. Now another sort of supernatural, action-y type movie is Stakeland. This is a zombie slash vampire movie. It takes place in a dystopian, post-apocalyptic landscape and feels very much like a zombie movie, except instead of zombies, they're just ravenous, bloodthirsty vampires. And the great thing about Stakeland is it really is the best of both worlds. It's got all the aesthetic and storytelling you would want from a really solid zombie flick, but then that vampire twist makes things even more interesting and fantastic. Now this is a very low budget movie, you can tell by some of the footage I'm showing you here. However, it's incredibly successful at being a zombie vampire movie. In fact, the writer-director would go on to do Cold in July, another movie I've highly recommended on this channel over the years, and is also one of the primary creators of Sweet Tooth on Netflix. But if you're into zombies or vampires, Stakeland is gonna be one of the best picks off this list for you. Okay, one more movie from South Korea, and this one's very different from the other. This is actually a slow-paced, murder mystery type thing titled Burning. I say type thing because it is kind of hard to tell what's going on with Burning at first. Like I said, it's very slow, but it is beautiful. There's some stunning cinematography in this movie, and the storytelling here at times can be pretty poetic. It's nice at times. Steven Yin actually has an amazing role in this movie. It's one of my favorite characters I've ever seen him play. It's very understated, very subtle, but there's this undercurrent there that I just don't see him doing in other things that I thought was really great in Burning. I will say this is for the patient viewer, but there is a payoff if you can be patient enough for Burning. The only documentary to make this list is based on a wild true story. It's titled The Imposter. This centers around a young man in Spain who claims to be the missing son of a grieving family in Texas who had been missing for three years. Now, the title does give away a pretty major spoiler, but that's not the only thing of interest in this documentary. The way that this all played out is incredibly interesting, and the production of the documentary has some really slick reenactments that are moody and really just kind of heighten the spooky nature of this story. If you like true crime or things that are true crime adjacent, then The Imposter is gonna be the pick for you off of this list. All right, Shia LaBeouf makes a list with one of my favorite performances he's ever done. Now, this isn't necessarily my favorite movie of his, but it certainly is one of the strongest performances, and it's because he was given a lot to work with in the script for Man Down. What happened in that room is real. I can't take that back, you know. I can't rewind it, you know, it's just, just one of the things. 
As I said, I've loved some of his characters over the years, like the one in Fury, but a lot of times the scripts don't give him much to work with, and he manages to do a lot with them. The script for Man Down has so many layers to it. This takes place in a post-apocalyptic America, but not like a Mad Max thing. This feels very realistic, like something after the collapse of government, and Shia LaBeouf's character is a US Marine trying to find his son. Man Down goes back and forth between this post-apocalyptic present day and the time that he served overseas. And Man Down does not go into silly, over-the-top directions. It stays very grounded and deals with some very heavy themes. I would imagine almost anyone who has served would find some way to identify with this movie, or even if you just are close with someone who served, there's a lot of meat on the bone with Man Down. Now, if you're like me and you ever suffered from beard envy, you're gonna wanna pay attention to today's sponsor, The Beard Club. As someone who's been sporting a beard for almost 20 years, I know they can be frustrating. No matter what you do, there's always gonna be some patchy areas, and that's where The Beard Club really has you covered. They've got everything you need to step up your beard game in their growth kits. Growth oil, growth vitamins, a derma roller, and even vitamin growth spray. In fact, I use the vitamin growth spray and the growth oil and the vitamins every single day, and my beard feels fantastic. Well, I've only just been using them for about a month, not only am I noticing that I'm having to trim more often, but I had a little patch here that never quite connected, and now I'm starting to see more growth and healthier, fuller growth. But one of the best things about the Beard Club is their growth guarantee. If you're not seeing results within the first five months, they will offer you a full refund, so there's really no risk if you want to get serious about growing a better beard. So if you're finally ready for that full, luxurious beard you've always wanted, go to my link in the video description or just go to beardclub.com slash flickconnection and use my code flickconnection to save 15% off your first order with Beard Club. It's also worth noting that their trimmer is easily the best trimmer I've ever used. It goes smooth like butter, it's nice and wide, it doesn't pinch or pull, and it comes with a bunch of color-coded guards, so you're never gonna make mistakes with what length you're trimming. So again, go to beardclub.com slash flickconnection, use my code flickconnection to save 15%, or just use the link in the video description or the top pinned comment, which by the way, that's where I put the full list of all the movies we're discussing in this video. But speaking of the movies, let's move on with the rest of this list. I would imagine most fans of the show Yellowstone will love my next pick, and not just because it stars Kevin Costner. We came to see our grandson. My boy doesn't have to answer to you. And we don't have to answer to you. Whoa. <laughs> In the recently released Let Him Go, Costner and Diane Lane play a couple of grandparents desperately trying to reclaim their grandson from a terrible family that have taken him under their wing. Now this is right off the bat a really sad story, but it's also fairly unique. It doesn't look or feel like a movie I've seen before. It is fairly slow paced, but it's so well acted by the two of them and Jeffrey Donovan, who is particularly maniacal in this movie. I really love what he did. I'm a fan of him as an actor and this is one of my favorite little roles I've seen him in. This has got some really intense moments in it. I mean, ones that caught me by surprise because of the old fashioned slow pace. You're not really expecting this movie to hit as hard as it does, but this movie can be pretty brutal at times. And again, it's just kind of a top notch thriller if you can be patient through a slow paced movie. Now my next pick is not a slow paced movie. In fact, my number eight pick on this list goes to lucky number 11. This is just a fun, colorful, kind of a mystery movie. It's a mystery in the sense that the viewer never quite knows what's going on, yet the main characters aren't really trying to solve a mystery. Rather, there's a con going on behind the scenes, and it's difficult to tell who is actually in control of the narrative with Lucky Number 11, and it manages to work. Josh Hartnett is particularly good as the lead here, Lucy Liu is fantastic. I loved her in this movie. And then you get some really great characters from both Ben Kingsley and Morgan Freeman. They're kind of playing the two dueling villains in the story and a fantastic character from Bruce Willis. He kind of doesn't quite seem like he meshes with this movie, yet it manages to work. Again, this is just a fun sort of caper con artist type thing that doesn't feel grounded or realistic, but is still just entertaining and really fun and 
again, colorful to watch. Another really colorful movie on this list is Little Nemo Adventures in Slumberland. A movie I mentioned on my previous video of stunning movies on Netflix, where they actually have a live action adaptation of this movie starring Jason Momoa. It's titled Slumberland, and while I did recommend that movie, I far prefer the original from 1989. This has just jaw-dropping Japanese animation, and it takes place in this fantasy dream world where almost anything is possible, and they take you to some miraculous places in this story and some really grim ones as well. For an adventure story where you're following a very young child, this movie really hits on a lot of cylinders. Not only is it as visually stunning as a movie like Inception, but there are really high stakes for an animated adventure movie. I mean, they have to go to this nightmare world and it is kind of chilling again with just some stunning visuals. For a movie from 1989, this one was just so far ahead of the types of animated movies we were making here in the US, so much so that it still holds up today as a fantastic watch with the family or by yourself. I'm not recommending this as a family movie. This is one almost anyone interested in the way I've described it could watch and thoroughly enjoy with or without kids. My number six pick is based on a true story that is not only a wild one, but it's also largely responsible for reinvigorating the spirit of exploration in the world, so much so that it might have actually led to the space race, Contiki. Now this is the true story of explorer Tor Heyerdahl, who set sail on a balsa wood raft to try to prove that the Polynesian islands were settled by people from South America. Now this took place in 1947, and when you know how massive the Pacific Ocean is, it is a wild prospect to put a bunch of men on a raft that essentially has no steering to just drift all the way across it. So not only is this based on just this incredible true adventure, it's also beautifully shot. I mean, this movie has some stunning sequences in it, some with whale sharks, some with just bloodthirsty sharks. In fact, there's one scene with a shark that's one of the most masculine things I've ever seen in a movie ever. But overall, this is just a really well-rounded movie that has beautiful moments in it and just some high adventure as well. My next pick is a nail biter of a thriller that deals with some culty people, to say the least, in The Invitation. Now this is one that was on Netflix for years and I would always recommend it to my audience. You can check it out for free on Freebie right now. In this movie, Logan Marshall Green plays a man who's visiting his ex-wife's house and not only is that just the biggest mistake he makes of the night, but she's got some really weird new friends. What's so perfect about The Invitation is it's very difficult to tell what's in his head, what he's maybe paranoid or just in his head about, and what's actually going on with these weirdos at this California party. The Invitation left me guessing all the way up to the climax, and then it ultimately sticks the landing and delivers. This is a really slick thriller movie that reminded me kind of like a modern day Hitchcock type thing. If that sounds like you and you've never seen this, Jim, I highly recommend it. Jeremy Renner makes the list with easily my favorite movie of his, Wind River. You know, you may have kids one day. You cannot blink. Not once, not ever. Now, speaking of Yellowstone, this is actually written and directed by Taylor Sheridan, the creator of Yellowstone, and has similar vibes. In this movie, another Avenger, Elizabeth Olsen, is actually an FBI agent investigating the murder of a Native American woman in a Wyoming reservation. And in order to sort of integrate with the locals, she takes the help of a local hunter, played by Jeremy Renner, and this turns into a fantastic neo-noir investigation story. Now, it does go to some dark places that make this movie not as rewatchable as I would have liked, but it's still incredibly effective and just a banger of a movie with some top-notch performances, some really tense moments, and another one that ultimately just sticks to landing and ends up being a solid flick. Honestly, I'm surprised it's included for free. I could say that about most of the movies on this list. 
My number three pick is the last of three foreign language movies on this list. This one did not come from South Korea. This one's actually from Russia and is a wild, mind-bending sci-fi movie that anybody who considers themselves a film buff needs to see in their lifetime, Stalker. This is from 1979 and is nearly three hours of incredibly slow-paced action. In fact, Stalker is an exercise in watching slow-paced movies. You really need to lull into this and strap in for the three-hour ride. You cannot be waiting for big monumental things to be happening in this movie. But it's beautifully shot and if you pay attention to the setup, it is such an interesting concept and much of the slow paced filmmaking is actually done in place of special effects, meaning most of what you're seeing on camera in this movie is not really that fantastical, yet it's set up so incredibly well that you get sucked into this fantasy world that literally doesn't exist. Now, I will say, this is not a recommendation for everybody. If you don't like slower paced movies, this is not gonna be the one to try out. And if you typically don't read subtitles, this is not gonna be the one to try out. But if you're in the mood for something new and different, I say new, it came out in 1979, but it's so different from anything you've probably ever seen before, I highly recommend this movie for you. Just don't go into this one expecting a traditional sci-fi film. Expect something completely different than anything you've seen before, and I think a lot of you will be pleasantly surprised. My all-time favorite director, Martin Scorsese, makes this list with one of his first movies and still one of my favorites, Mean Streets. What's a mook? A mook? What's a mook? I don't know. What's a mook? You can't call me a mook. I can't? No. This was also one of Robert De Niro's first roles and really one of my favorites of his as well. He plays an absolute wild man in this movie and he feels a lot different than he does in a lot of other movies, which I appreciated. This also has kind of a raw, realistic look to it that Scorsese expertly crafted. I believe Tarantino is even on record as stating that he designed the look of Pulp Fiction after Mean Streets. This one too is kind of slow paced in the sense that it's a plotless Scorsese movie. You're really just getting a taste for what life was like for guys like this in 1970s New York and I absolutely love it. It's got a killer soundtrack which is always the case with Scorsese. It's got some fancy camera work at times and then also some just down and dirty camera work and then ultimately explores some, I think, really interesting themes. If you've been a fan of any, and I mean any of Martin Scorsese's gangster movies, Goodfellas, Casino, The Departed, Raging Bull, Taxi Driver, I'll even throw in the mix even though it's not really a gangster movie. You love any of those and you've never seen Mean Streets, make it the first movie you watch off this list, trust me. And then my number one pick on a list of bangers is probably my top 10 movies of all time. I think it is a masterpiece from a director who's done a few movies, but only one good one, Buffalo 66. Okay, I don't want to waste any more money. This is my last $2 okay. I'm putting in. Yes or no? Yes. All right, you do it for me. If you don't want to do it, don't no, do it. No, no, I'll do it. Okay, let's look like we like each other and span time and do not touch me. Now, actor Vincent Gallo wrote and directed this movie as well, and he plays kind of a wild man in this thing. Christina Ricci has a fantastic role in this. Angelica Houston. Mickey Rourke even shows up for one scene, and it's a great one. But the basic setup here is that Vincent Gallo plays a man released from prison. That's the opening shot of the movie. And he kidnaps Christina Ricci's character to try to show her off to his really awful parents. Now I'm chuckling because of the way that this movie is presented. It is quite funny for most of the movie. And then it goes into some deep, dark places for fairly short periods of time, but it is so effective. You really do feel the pain that this character is feeling in ways that just you don't get from other movies. I mean, there are some scenes in this movie that would just seem completely dull on paper, on a script, and the characters just bring it to life in this incredible way. The way this movie is shot is funky and interesting. I literally love every 
thing about this movie. If you've been a long time viewer and you really like a lot of my recommendations, I could not recommend Buffalo 66 any stronger. Go check it out, it's free on Freeview right now. You don't even have to give them your information to start watching movies for free on Freeview. That's how cool it is. Thanks again to Beard Club for sponsoring another video. Go check out their link. If you have a beard or you've wanted to grow one, they are the real deal. But I will keep making these videos as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this special Freebie episode, and you will see me on the next one.